Hello everybody, it's me Nate aka Devil Dog and I'm back with another video. This is it people. You guys voted for it. You wanted to see a rant video of The Suicide Squad. But first I have to let you know something. I released a video not that long ago that was called a Try Not to Laugh Challenge. Now, it was not a real Try, the, try Not to Laugh Challenge. It's not. If your people would watch the video all the way through, you would see that it's actually a giveaway for an Xbox Series X system. Uh, I was hoping not to have to explain this to people, but apparently no one really watches my videos all the way through, so they don't seem to even pick up on it. Uh, you, you people need to actually watch my videos all the way through. A lot of times I'll hide stuff in them just to prove the fact that you're not watching my videos. Um, it's kind of mean, but yeah, I mean, if you go to that video and watch it all the way through, you might be able to figure out how to enter for your chance to win an Xbox Series X system if you want one. But let on to the moment at hand, my rant video about the Suicide Squad. James Gunn's epic uh, blank paycheck movie he was allowed to do after being fired for a short bit. Um, and they, they allowed him to do this. Now, in my review, I failed to point this out that I thought this was like a reboot remake, but apparently it's supposed to be a sequel uh, or something like that because it takes place after the first movie did. I did not pick up on this, so I apologize there. And you got some returning characters like Rick Flagg, a Captain Boomerang, and of course Harley Quinn. Uh, now, the first thing about this video is I have to let you know, I absolutely really love the movie. I really do. So it's going to be hard for me to nitpick on this film, but it still has some major flaws with it. Um, first of all is the fact of how many characters that James Gunn introduces into this movie. I think it's like, what, 20 uh, plus characters? And, and in the first five minutes, most all of them get killed. And I get that. I get that. A lot of them are uh, lesser named characters. But some of them, damn it, I wanted to see Captain Boomerang actually get through the movie. But nope. Boom, he's killed right from the beginning, which pisses me off. Um, then uh, Javelin, I think his name was. Javelin, um, uh, the blue and yellow guy with Javelin. Um, talk about a throwaway character there, you know, just for some stupid tie-in to give us Javelin uh, to Harley Quinn. And, you know, and Harley Quinn is kind of funny. She, you know, it's typical Harley Quinn. She's over there smacking his dead body going, what, what am I supposed to do with the Javelin? And it's a really poor tie-in to the finale, um, I think, for this javelin. Because, you know, through the whole movie, she's just carrying this javelin. But there's certain parts where she's not, and yet, all of a sudden, then it's back again. So there's some uh, continuity errors there. Um, hands down, um, Rick Flagg, I hate to say it, he was a, a douche in the first movie. He really was. This one, I like this character way better. It actually made me kind of like Rick Flagg. And I did not like it when he got killed at the end of the movie. It made sense, but once again, it's just kind of like, ah. Eh. Now, you know, anybody who's seen the movie knows Amanda Waller gathers these people. And uh, the, one of the main things that pisses me off about this movie is that it, it kind of has a stupid story. I mean, you got to expect to have a stupid story. But Amanda Waller in the first one, was it Deadshot? I think it was Deadshot, Will Smith's character, uh, forces Deadshot into the Suicide Squad by threatening his daughter, right? Well, what she do with this and what Bloodsport, I think his name is? I just, Elba's, I always say his name wrong. The dude that's going to be voicing Knuckles in Sonic uh, the Hedgehog 2, um, you know, does the same thing for Bloodsport. Forces him to be the leader in the Suicide Squad by threatening him by uh, saying that she is going to pull stroke and have his daughter locked up and thrown in prison. So that right there is not an original um, concept at all. It's it's stupid. I don't like it. Um, it does build some more back story with the uh, you know the blood sports character arc uh, which I thought was better done than the first one. A, a lot of people uh, still say they kind of liked the comic booky feel of the first one better, but. I'm sorry, I'm tired of sky beams and, and a stupid lady that's dancing and stuff. I mean, the first one had no plot, okay? It had no plot. She set up the Suicide Squad to stop things that happen, happen. But then by setting up the Suicide Squad, she was the reason why things happen. Now, this one uh, has to do naturally with them being sent uh, to stop Project Starfish. 
um, on some island, and you know they implant everybody with this explosive thing in their neck. Now, one of the main characters that a buddy of mine actually pointed out was King Shark, who was voiced by Sylvester Stallone, and apparently um, they decided to uh, not make his character the way he should be from the comics. Uh, my friend claims that King Shark actually teams up with uh, Harley Quinn and is almost sort of like a, the Bruce Banner in the group, uh, you know, like a very intelligent being who is pretty much really, really strong. And in this one, he's a complete buffoon. He's a complete friggin' idiot. He's trying to eat, you know, for nom nom, nom nom nom, and you know, they, they drop buildings on him in this movie. They shoot him point blank range. Nothing hurts him. And I'm wondering if you do that all, all, you know, all of them. How the hell did you inject something into his neck? I'm starting to think that they never injected an explosive in the King Shark's neck. They just expected him to be too stupid to realize that he could just leave. Uh, I, I don't know about that. Leave in the comments below what you think about that. Um, and the other thing that kind of made me wonder is like the weasel character. They, they build up the weasel character and it, it is pretty funny right in the first couple minutes when they jump into the water. He drowns and they're like, did anyone even check to see if he knows how to swim? And he dies and it's, it's pretty funny. Now, yes, there is a uh, end credit scene that shows that the weasel is alive and fine. But my question is... Doesn't the weasel have one of those chips implanted in his neck as well? Wouldn't they have seen that he actually started moving? And if they did, wouldn't they have detonated it and killed the weasel? I know they're leaving that open for the next Suicide Squad movie, which you, you know they're going to make it. Even though this was considered a box office flop, but that's only because of with COVID, people are gotten so used to watching shit at home you people won't get off your asses and grow a pair and go back to the movie theater you get a different experience at the theater the big giant screen the boom and sound system i mean seriously people quit being chicken shits enjoy your life while you still have it I mean, but no, instead, everyone wants to pay like $15, $20 extra to sit at home and watch it on HBO Max or whatever it's called. That's fucking stupid, people. The whole point of a movie like this is to actually go to the theater and watch it. And that was the highlight of it was actually being there. It was super loud and banging. And, you know, the banter between uh, Bloodsport and John Cena's character, uh, well, I, I, I can't remember his name, they work so well together. And... I, I like John Cena's character, and there is a end sequence that I'm sure you've seen uh, where, you know, you think he dies at the end of the movie, uh, which is a part that is a rant that's coming up, but you'll see that, no, it's a setup for the uh, an HBO television series with that character, Peacemaker, uh, that's his name, Peacemaker, um, uh, and to where the people that attack... Um, uh, Amanda Waller and knock her out before she detonates all their chips. Uh, their punishment, which doesn't seem like a punishment, is to go with Peacemaker and I mean, control Peacemaker as they send him on all these different missions. So I, I don't know. It's interesting, a nice little twist. Um, but I would have loved to see Peacemaker back in another movie, not a television series. But enough is that. But the main rant I have to have with this movie is not the fact that they didn't go all cartoony with it. They do. The final boss is the giant Starro, right? The starfish. Um, but how come when he's shooting out all those little starfish things, there's only one time they kind of block their face, and all the, 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 the Suicide Squad. And after that, the, the starfish don't ever go after them again. I don't understand that. It's just because, hey, we pay good money for these actors. We can't have them in the movie with starfish. You know, Oh, let's put a mask on and keep them starfish attacking us. So that seemed kind of stupid. That's the, the middle part with Margot Robbie's, um, you know, uh, Harley Quinn dating that, that that guy who wants to marry her and make her uh, be her uh, be his wife just so he, he seems cooler and more powerful. It's pointless and stupid. It's really really dumb. And it was just an excuse to show Margot Robbie kicking ass again, which honestly is pretty well done. Even though I'm not a fan of the partial shaky cam fight scenes they have in this. But the main problem I have with this movie, which is really weird considering that, look, everything about the movie, how comical and stupid it is, is the part with um, uh, Bloodsport as he's like collapsing on these buildings, falling through these buildings on this floor, and they just keep having to stop. Almost like um, if you ever played Dragon's Lair, the part where Dirk the Daring's falling down the, the thing on the little wooden circle and he has to jump at the right time. It's like, first of all, 
I, I get the fact that you can't be realistic with this movie. You can't. You can't. But that bothered me so much. You know how stupid that was. You know, I, even the Margot Robbie part outrunning a collapsing building was stupid. But I'm like, okay, it's comical and over the top. But there's no way that, you know, that, you know, Dead Sport or whatever the fuck his name is, him falling and just happened to landing perfectly in the same area where Peacemaker is to do the final fight with him. That was stupid. Um, I actually didn't really have a problem with Starro or whatever. I thought he was kind of a, you know, a sad creature because even at the end when they're killing him, he pretty much uh, has uh, his, uh, uh, his zombie army even say, it's like, I was happy just floating in space. One simple line makes you feel bad for the main bad guy they were fighting. And at the end, you know, they did the right thing. But it's kind of like, honestly, I get that they're bad people. Okay, I get that they're bad people. Um, but they basically used the data uh, to hide it uh, so the, the everyone doesn't realize the federal government was funding this. It's kind of funny how uh, this movie came out and uh, the federal government was funding something in a different country which led to a bunch of people dying that they tried to cover up and blame on one person. Wow, I wonder what that could be compared to. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but in the end, I know this isn't really actually a rant you were probably wanting to see. You were probably wanting me to pick it apart and say it was stupid, but honestly, I liked the movie. I think the acting of all the characters was great. It was a shame to see so many of them die. I do think they focused a little bit too heavy on the middle part that could have been cut out with, with the Harley Quinn and the guy. Uh, it was an excuse for a fight scene. Um, honestly, um, it's a stupid popcorn flick, and you got to take it for what it is. And in the end, I, I hate to say it, I know this isn't the rant you were wanting, but there's not much I can nitpick about this movie. It's stupid, it's dumb, it's over the top. You got what, uh, uh, TDK, the detachable kid, Nathan Fallon's character, where all he can do is move his arms and they float over and it's just like, like bitch slapping people and they shoot him in the arms and kill him. It's stupid, but it's funny. It sets the tone for the whole movie right there. If you watch that and go, I'm not going to like this. It's like, no, you're not going to like the movie then. It, it's stupid. It's over the top. It's comical. It's got good characters, good acting. The plot is kind of stupid with some, you know, loopholes and some, uh, you know, plot points that are uh, messed up. Uh, but in the end, I'm sorry. I have to say I like this movie. I can recommend you see it. And the main thing is that is the rant about this is the fact that you people need to get off your asses and get back to the movie theaters. Get back to the movie theaters. This is why we're not getting any good movies anymore. Because these studios are not counting the digital things on streaming as a profit margin. They're counting it based off of ticket sales and movie theaters. And as long as you people keep staying at home and paying more money to watch it on a smaller screen instead of the big screen that you would in a theater, they're, they're not going to keep coming out with movies as much. They're not going to spend as much money to make better movies. And in the end, that's the main rant about this is you people need to get off your asses and go back to the damn movie theaters and save the theaters before they're gone. I'm so tired tired of this culture of everybody just wanting to stay in their own bubble and do everything online and digitally. Get off your asses. Physical is better. Physical's always been better and it always will be better. And it costs less too. Jeez, people. But in the end, I like the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. Should have been called Suicide Squad 2. I don't know. Uh, leave in the comments below if you've seen the movie. What was your favorite character? What was your favorite part? Uh, make sure to like uh, this video. Hit the bell icon to stay updated whenever I release any vi uh, videos on my channel. Please subscribe and go to my Try Not to Lap Challenge and watch the video all the way through, people, for your chance to enter and win an Xbox Series X system. This was Nate, a.k.a. Devil Dog, and I always end my videos by saying, have fun, play hard, and remember, people, the devil is in the details. Peace out until next time.